Good morning, Stewart's Chapel. This is Brother Don Pearson here in Don Counts, and we're at the Catlett's farm. I, we, one time we're going to come back and do some filming in his birds. I, you might have a new nickname for Gordon Catlett, the bird man. This place is crawling with birds. He loves his birds. Anyway, let's finish Amos. We're going to finish Amos today. This is Saturday's devotion. Amos chapter 9, verse 11 through 15. This is what some theologians and commentaries consider the seventh vision of Amos. Amos is going to end with a message of hope. On that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, this, that's us, this is all about us, this is, we're included in this now, says the Lord who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Amazing thing. As fast, they can't, the harvest is so plentiful. It's a time of abundance that, that while they're harvesting, the plowman is coming right there, getting ready for the next harvest. And the treader of grapes, him who sows seed, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their garden. Talking about God's people. I will plant them in their garden. And no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God, the Lord has spoken. You know, Amos begins with, Thus saith the Lord, and it ends with, Thus saith the Lord. This is the message or the vision of restoration. Restoration after God's discipline and judgment upon His people. He's going to restore four things in this section of Scripture. And then one day, God makes a promise that He's going to restore these four things. We are living in the abundance of that restoration. He will restore the throne of David. Jesus is the one who sits on that throne. Verse 11. He will restore his family or worship some. Now, what this family is, it's not just the Jews. It's not just the remnant. It's not just Israel. It's not just the, 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 the brought back captives of Judah and Israel. It includes the Gentiles. He will restore his family. Verse 12. Verse 13 and 14, there will be a restoration of prosperity or of abundance. God's blessings will flow upon His people again. And the fourth thing, in chapter, verse 15, there will be a restoration of God's favor, His hand, not for a hand of judgment, but a hand of favor upon His people. Now, that's the way most of us would have liked the whole book to be. You remember early on in Amos, God kept saying to them, Seek me, seek me, seek me, if you seek me. Uh, they could have enjoyed all of that. They never did seek him. But there's a promise of hope. Christians call that heaven, but there's, in a sense, we do enjoy God's favor at times in our life. If we take it lightly, though, like any other people of God, if we take it lightly, well, His hand will come, like we just saw just a little earlier, and touch, and everything melts. Everything just disappears. God ends the Amos with a message of hope. You and I have that message, that hope. It's found in Jesus is found walking close to Him. That's the way God always intended it for His people, to walk close to Him. Love you, Stuart's Chapel.